Hello everyone, this is Joe Brewer here in, Beer, in uh, Bar HR Columbia. I'm at the Bio Parque Moncora, where we're building a food forest. And what I want to show you today is how you can expand the frontier. Normally when you think of a frontier, it's the boundary between two different populations. So it might be two different kinds of ecosystems. And because we already cleared all of this grass and native plants are starting to grow back into it, we have this nice pond here we have a frontier boundary, which is the boundary between the area where we already pulled the grass and the area where the invasive grass still is. And so what we're starting to do now is expand the frontier. Because as you can see, if we go back into the area where for the last few months we've been doing a lot of work, and you can see that we've dug our retention channel, we have a rainwater harvesting, a large compost pile from the grass we pulled before, and there are a lot of native plants starting to grow and we're just weeding the, the invasive grass. So as we, you know, here's some invasive grass right here and I'm gonna weed it, but right next to it is a little native plant. And over time, the native plants are coming to outcompete the invasive grass because we're helping to be sure that that happens. And so this is becoming a different kind of ecosystem comprised of a diversity of native bushes and shrubs and ground covers. But over here, it's all this brachiaria, this invasive grass that's been there they planted all these other trees 10 years ago, and there's still just grass here because this grass is so good at outcompeting everything. So we have a frontier boundary where the deck is stacked. The invasive grass is just going to take back over unless we keep weeding it and help these native bushes to come in. But because we have this nice retention pond that is going to help water to absorb into the ground, and we're starting to plant trees that will grow roots to help stabilize the slopes and hold water in this space so the water absorbs into the ground and is cycled through the roots of the trees, which is one thing that we're going to be doing with the structure of this space. And there's this big hump here, and you can see it maybe a little better if you go to the side. That there's the inside of the pond and then the hump over and then all that invasive grass. And so what we're doing right now is starting another grass pile of compost. It's right there. It's pretty small right now. Not like the massive one back over there from all the other grass we already pulled. And as we're pulling this grass to make another compost pile, we're beginning to expand the frontier. And the idea here is that the boundary of interaction between the two ecosystems is only maybe a couple of meters or maybe like 10, 15 feet. So if you look at from the inside of the pond to this edge of grass, there's maybe eight or 10 feet in horizontal distance. And we want to just push this boundary back a little bit. So all we're starting to do, as you can see here, we just started pulling this grass. Maybe I'll go lower, you can see it. So I'm going to pull the grass around the perimeter of the pond. And the idea is, because this pond is so important, and the water, when it rains, the water comes in and sinks into the, sinks into the ground in this pond, that everything growing downhill from the pond is going to grow faster. Which means this is a place where we want to very strategically take advantage of this acceleration to grow plants we want and to remove plants we don't want. So... All we're doing is starting to pull out the line of grass, which literally means pull out the grass and expand this line by about two meters. So all we're doing now is about six feet of grass or two meters of grass from the edge of the dirt pile that was from, pulled from the ground when we dug the hole out around this perimeter of small trees that are already here. We're gonna just expand the frontier. And we're doing this so that these native plants over here, as they grow outward, will be able to take advantage of the acceleration of growth from the water that's being retained in this retention pond. And because the water retention would actually accelerate the growth of the invasive grass on this downhill side, we want to push the frontier back. Because we expect that the amount of rain being absorbed is going to infiltrate downward into the ground and downhill by 10 feet. So that's the distance that we're wanting to remove the invasive grass. So we're expanding this frontier for the native bushes and shrubs and the biodiversity native to this area, as well as the plants we strategically choose to place here, and removing the invasive grass. And if we didn't do this, then this, this invasive grass would just come back and take over again. So I wanted to show you how, by understanding how the frontier effect works, that the highly competitive invasive grass would win at the frontier, we need to actively manage the frontier. And also because our water retention system is going to accelerate the growth 
of any plants downhill, that's exactly where we need to push the frontier of the invasive grass back. So I want to show this to you to say that these boundaries between different kinds of ecological activity are where the most important interventions can be made. And here's an example where we can expand the kind of ecosystem we want and push back the one we want don't. Oh, sweetie, hold on just a second. I'll be there. And my daughter's playing on the grass and looks like she just got hurt, which means I need to go in and be sure she's okay. I think she cut her finger on the grass and is upset because it's bleeding. So um, I just want to show this to you so you could see that designing for the frontier effect is a way of helping to propagate the dispersal, the spread of the species you want to spread and to push back the ones that you don't. So I hope this is insightful for you to think about where you might look for frontier effects and how you might make use of them to help achieve your own regenerative goals and that this inspires you to regenerate some land yourself.